All right, what we're going to do today is we're going to attempt to demystify the Keith Richards licks to Honky Tonk Women's Stones Classic. And I think like a lot of Stones songs, people are intimidated to try to learn this one because of the open G tuning. But what I hope to show you today is that once you get by that simple matter of uh, retuning your guitar, you'll find that the licks are actually, for the most part, pretty simple. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you the uh, intro, verse, and chorus. Uh, and then hopefully if we have time a little later on, a little bit of the solo. During this demo part, as I play to the backing track, I'm not going to play every single lick during the verse. I'm going to be playing more of a rhythm part for some of it. You'll see what I mean later. But rest assured that I will be explaining all of the Keith licks uh, in the lesson section. But again, like my other Stones lessons, I'm trying to show you a way to have the framework of playing this song without getting overly obsessed with every single note. Okay, because that's just not Keith. If you watch Keith playing this song live, you'll see that he plays it differently every single time. So, obsessing over the details is kind of missing the point of Keith Richards' style, in my opinion. top here, um, open G tuning real quickly, uh, you want to tune your, your E strings down a whole step to D, so make them sound like your fourth string, and take your fifth string A and tune it down a whole step to G, make it sound like your third string. It's that simple. Um, Keith does not use the low E string, um, you could not bother tuning it down. I tune it down just, you know, in case you hit a bad note, if you've at least tuned it down, uh, it's more likely that if you hit the sixth string inadvertently that it's not going to be a bad note. Okay, so uh, the song starts off with just an open G chord, which of course, in open G tuning, that is an open G chord. and but he hasn't hit all the strings. He's, to me, it sounds like he's hitting mainly the third, fourth, and fifth strings. Primarily the third and the fourth strings. Couldn't be easier, and like I said, when you see him playing it live, he really relishes the fact that he's playing this really cool lick with one hand. Um, I'm muting it with my other hand. He may or may not do that. I mean, not necessarily, right? So, um, picking versus uh, using your fingers. I think Keith uses his fingers, and you definitely have to use your fingers for the main signature lick of the intro, which is as follows. You're going to be playing it on the third and first strings. Remember, your first string has been tuned down to a D. Okay, you're going to do, it's, it's the classic blues box that I've showed you in other lessons, you know. But instead of playing the D on the second string third fret, you're playing the D as the open first string because it's been tuned down to a D. So instead of, you're going, alright. So it's just using your thumb and forefinger. I have seen some people play it by bending that instead of sliding to it. Uh, but Keith does the slide. You can watch him play it live and see him do that. Alright, so that's the intro.
going into the verse, uh, the little lick that hooks the G chord to the 4, the D chord. And remember, we're doing all the sliding uh, A form, uh, the, your movable A shape, sliding it up to a D. The lick that hooks it is an open 5th string, sliding up to the 4th fret, and then playing the 3rd string open. So again, D, 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 and then I've also shown you this lick in a number of lessons, including the John Fogarty uh, Proud Mary, but it's the classic Keith lick of going from the open A form to the open D form. plays it all over the fretboard. It's essentially the lick in virtually every Keith Richards song. So, again, now it's right here that I diverged from Keith's playing when in the demo. And the reason is, um, one, he plays it differently every time, and two, those licks, frankly, they're a little bit hard to get. But what he get, does is something like this. After he does the... I just pulled off, I just went... But he goes... Or... So it's that third string open again, playing the fifth uh, fret and third fret on the first string. And he does some kind of hammer-ons there before going to the A. Up to your 5, the E at the 7th fret. Right, so after playing your, your E, your 5 at the 7th fret there, the connecting lick to go back to the G, the 1 is... So it's similar to our first connecting lick, which was... But on that one, you landed on the open G third string. This one, you're going to come back to the open G fifth string. So that one was the same as the first time around. And then I just pulled off again. Again, Keith is going to be doing some of the and some other little licks in there. You can figure those out if you want. I've given you the framework. Um, this is the way I play. So after the verse, at the end of the verse, leading into the chorus, Ronnie uh, plays a little lick at the uh, 12th fret uh, position there. It's kind of a pedal steel bend, anchoring your pinky on the 15th fret B string, bending the 14th fret uh, G string. So it's a unison bend. Or anything of that ilk. Where you're barring your uh, G and B strings at the 12th fret. And that, of course, mimics the signature lick from the beginning. And as you'll see in a minute, it's very similar to the signature lick I'm going to show you from the solo. All right, so then you go into the chorus where you're just chunking on a G chord. Fifth and uh, fourth strings, real simple. Hammering on the second fret, uh, E note, fourth string. And come up to the E chord at the seventh fret. Same thing, hammer on the uh, fourth string. And come up to the twelfth fret, your G chord, of course, it's your uh, octave. And this is the little lick. 
That's just a cool lick, and of course it's Keith's standard. It's the first two uh, chords of Brown Sugar. But anyway. And then... And that's it. And at the end of the chorus, they play a... Or... Again, there's variations galore of that lick, but that's the lick, uh, in essence, that ends the chorus. All right, so as I indicated at the outset, I'm going to show you just the signature lick from the solo. The solo is, is fairly unremarkable for the most part, but there's one very cool lick that shows a couple of things. It shows how much you can do with three notes. Uh, in the pentatonic scale and also how different tonalities can be achieved using the same notes played at different parts in the fretboard. What's cool about that lick? What's cool about that lick is it's really simple and it sounds great. So you're in the uh, first position E minor pentatonic scale, which again, this song is in the key of G major, so your G major pentatonic is the exact same notes as the E minor pentatonic, so most of us know our E minor pentatonic from the open position and from the 12th. Same notes as the G major, so if that helps. Okay, so all you're using is three notes, the E, the G and the A on the 4th and 3rd strings at the 12th and 14th fret. Bending the 14th fret 3rd string, releasing to the 12th fret, three notes. Okay, and you recognize that box. So we could have played the whole thing there. It's the same three notes. But it gives it a different tonality to play part of it there and then shift places on the fretboard. So that's just a little piece of the solo uh, to put uh, in your kit bag. So I hope that gives you a little framework for uh, figuring out a fun way to play Honky Tonk Women. It really is a simple song if you get that movable uh, A to D chord shape thing going on, play a little connecting riff here or there, uh, and have some fun with it. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.